everybody. Halloween's right around the corner and I thought we'd have a little bit of fun today. I enjoy some of my whimsical tarot decks. To me, tarot is more than just uh, introspection and divination. It can be used for fun as well. Just as the tarot cards evolved eventually into playing cards, we have a lot of whimsical decks that have been uh, produced by people for purposes of having fun. And I bought this Halloween tarot deck by Kipling West quite a few years ago. As you can see, the box is sort of worn. And I have a book. It came as a set with the book. And I have searched and I just cannot find the book right now. The book is, is really uh, uh, worth having. I believe the set comes with the book automatically. But the book does have pictures of the cards, you know, uh, grayscale pictures and little comments on each of the cards. So without any further delay, let's get into reviewing the Halloween Tarot, Kipling West. I've looked on YouTube and frankly, I just have not seen any reviews of this Halloween Tarot. It's produced by U.S. Games. It does come with a little white book. Uh, there's a little introductory card here. You can kind of read through that. Sometimes our lives seem shadowy and it's hard to tell what's around the next corner, much like Halloween night, when what is imagined is probably much scarier than what is really going on. Whatever the season, jump into the festive, if slightly freakish, old-time Halloween world of Kipling West. And let the tarot cards help you take a closer look at what may be lurking in the shadows of your life. The Halloween tarot deck is divided into 22 cards of the major arcana, 56 cards of the minor arcana. And the suits, instead of uh, pentacles and earth, we have pumpkins. For swords and air, we have bats to represent them. For cups and water, we have ghosts. And for wands and fire, in this deck we have imps. So welcome to Halloween. We also have this cute little black cat character that's in many, if not uh, all the cards. I think the majority of the cards do have this little cat in them. So this is really a very fun deck. I think you're gonna enjoy it. Not just at Halloween, but the rest of the year too. Okay, let's take a look at the card back. It's reversible. We've got the black cat, the spider, bats in the corners, skulls, the orange and black Halloween colors. Uh, it's typical US games, nice cardstock, not too thick. It's matte, it's not glossy. The cards don't stick, they're easy to shuffle. They're a good medium size to hold. They're not too big, they're not too small. So really, from that point of view, this is a, a wonderful deck, very worth having. Now let's go through the Major Arcana. Okay, we have the Fool, very nice typical representation of the Fool. He's uh, a jester and he's uh, sort of naively wandering towards the cliff. He's got a black cat there instead of a dog. He does have, instead of a backpack, he's got his little uh, traveling case there. Juggling, having a good time, the fool. The magician. Here we've got a representation of all the elements that are present in this deck. Pumpkins for earth, imps for fire, uh, ghosts for water, bats for air. There's the magician with all his elements, but in the theme of this deck. The High Priestess. I really like her. She's got uh, the pomegranates standing on the half moon. She's got the severity and mercy towers behind her still. We've got our little kitty cat up there. Very cute High Priestess card. And I think you can see that these cards uh, do represent very closely the Rider weight. Uh, meanings and symbology, even though they're in a whimsical fashion. I think you can use them quite well for a regular reading as well as just having fun with uh, your friends, letting your kids have a fun time. This is a really, really cute deck. I can't tell you enough how much I've enjoyed it through the years. 
Okay, then we move on to the Empress. We have the Bride of Frankenstein. How, how cute is that? She makes a beautiful Empress. Stars behind. She's got the, uh, the growth, the plants. The tree behind her. So since the Bride of Frankenstein is the Empress, naturally Frankenstein himself, the Emperor, sitting very four square there, representing structure, order, father, guidance. Then we have the Hierophant. He's got his supplicants in front of him. Pretty cute. Kitty cat supplicants. The Lovers, The Chariot, pretty cool wheels, Sweet Ride as the kids would say, The Chariot, then we have Strength, and I love the Lemniscates throughout the uh, draperies, I guess that is. Then we have the Hermit. The Mad Scientist as the Hermit. How perfect is that? Oh, he's gonna put a brain in that pumpkin. Wheel of Fortune is an actual Wheel of Fortune, <laughs> like from a carnival. Justice. The Hanged Man, Death, kind of a cool death card. I like the vulture. Even though it's uh, the creepy idea of death, we've got the grinning flower there and the happy pumpkins. Temperance. The Devil, the Tower card, nice tower, a haunted house, those ghosts went flying. There's a lot of fun imagery in each and every card in this deck. The Star, really beautiful, there's no woman in the picture. Let me see what the little white book has to say about this star card. I'm curious now. The star, gargoyle. As gargoyles channel water, this card offers new hope, understanding, optimism, renewal, clarity, insight. The harmony of the subconscious and conscious, an outpouring of feeling. And we have the moon. Got a werewolf howling at the moon. The sun. Nice sun card with the sunflowers. We've even got the babies. <laughs> the two-headed baby there. I imagine babies in the sun card actually represent um, a rebirth. So in that sense, they kind of fit with the card, but I think we all kind of get tired of seeing babies in the sun card. Ho-hum, but cute. And then we have Judgment. And finally, to end the Major Arcana, we have the World. Got our star of the deck, the Cat. I like the bones that encircle him. I like the animals that are chosen in the four corners to represent the, uh, the elements. Very cute. Okay, so moving into the minor arcana, here are all the aces. We have the ace of bats, ace of bats, which we rep represent the suit of swords. 
ace of imps, which would represent wands or fire. The ace of ghosts, which represents cups or water. And the ace of pumpkins, which would represent um, earth or pentacles or coins. It's even got the little kind of Rider Waite-ish uh, hand on these cards holding them. So it does hold true to Rider weight, although being whimsical and uh, very creative and imaginative in my opinion. All right, then let's take a look at the twos. Two of bats, a very typical Rider weight sort of an image. She's not holding swords, but she's got the bats there. Two of imps. Two of ghosts. How cute is that? And two of pumpkins. All right, moving along to the threes. Here you can kind of see the threes all together. Three of bats. Very typical Rider Waite image. Three of imps. Three of ghosts. And the three of pumpkins. Moving along to the fours. We have the four of bats. The rest there. Four of imps. Four of Ghosts, and the Four of Pumpkins. And now moving on to the Fives, we have the Five of Bats. Pretty close to the Five of Swords in Rider weight. Five of Imps, or Five of Wands. Five of Ghosts, and Five of Pumpkins. For the sixes, we have the six of bats, the six of imps, triumphal procession there, six of ghosts, and six of pumpkins. Moving on to the sevens, we have the seven of bats. The Seven of Imps, it's kind of a Pied Piper, which kind of really fits with the Seven of Swords in my mind. I like that image. Seven of Imps, Seven of Ghosts, and Seven of Pumpkins. Moving right along to the Eights, Eight of Bats or Eight of Swords, Eight of Imps, or Eight of Wands. We get that traditional sense that things are moving along. Eight of Ghosts and Eight of Pumpkins. Moving along to the Nines. The Nine of Bats. Nine of Imps. Nine of Ghosts and nine of pumpkins. So as you can see, these are just a uh, Halloween-y whimsical take on Rider Waite. Really nice deck. I'm, I really think it's just so adorable. Ten of bats, which would be the ten of swords. Ten of Imps, which would be the Ten of Wands. You really get that sense of overburden there. Too many kids. Ten of Ghosts. And Ten of Pumpkins. Here are the pages for each of the suits. I'll give you a little closer up. Look at each one. Page of Bats.
page of imps, page of ghosts, and page of pumpkins. Here we have the lineup of the knight's cards for each of the suits. They're all on horses. Let's get a closer look at each one. Knight of Bats, Knight of Imps, Knight of Ghosts, and Knight of Pumpkins. All right, here we have the Queen cards for each of the suits. To get you a little closer up picture of each one. The Queen of Bats, or Swords, and she's actually got a sword in this one. The Queen of Wands, or Queen of Imps, and she's holding a wand. The Queen of Ghosts, no cup there, but she's got a pumpkin, so for what it's worth. I love the fish tail. And we have the Queen of Pumpkins. And last of all, we've got the kings of each of the suits here. I'll move in so you can get a closer look at each one. The king of bats. The king of imps. Got a salamander in there on the bottom. The king of ghosts. and the King of Pumpkins. I hope you've enjoyed this quick run through of this deck. As I said, it's really adorable and cute, very fun. I've had it for quite a few years. I take it out every year about this time of the year for Halloween and have fun with it. And I hope you will decide to do so too. You've still got a couple of days to order it uh, on uh, Amazon.com if you'd like to get it before Halloween and you have the two-day delivery. Hey, why not? Otherwise, get it and set it back for next year. All right. Take care and we will see you all next time. Bye.